Hi everybody, it's Lisa from Sutton's Days. I'm just here today to give you a little catch up, to tell you where we've been, what's been going on. It's been crazy. So a little over a week ago, um, I did something where I injured my neck. It was actually, it was bothering me before that, but it hit that extreme part um, a little over a week ago to the point where I couldn't turn my head, um, I couldn't yawn, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sit, I couldn't do anything. It just, the sheer existence of my neck hurt. Um, I had a doctor's appointment on Wednesday anyway, so I waited until Wednesday, and when I saw her, she touched something on my the back of my shoulder, some muscle or something, and it just twisted me sideways um, because it hurt so bad, and she suggested I go see a massage therapist. So, so okay, great, I'll go see a massage therapist. But the doctor did did have did have some good stuff, okay? Um, you know, I've been doing the low-carb, high-fat diet uh, for three months now. I started uh, June 1st, and it was supposed to go to the end of August, the beginning of September. I would go in and have blood work done, and we would see uh, about whether or not we would put me on insulin. So, <laughs> um, my A1C was 7.9 in June, beginning of June, okay? And my A1C at the beginning of September was 5.7. And it was all done with a change in diet. I actually reduced one of my medications in half after the first month. Um, so it was all it was all diet. It, that's great. That is just phenomenal. Um, total of 28 pounds lost so far, and that much of a reduction in my A1C. She was almost as happy as I was about the whole thing. So that's my good news. We have a plan of attack. Um, like she said, I will never not be a diabetic but I can work towards becoming a non-medicated diabetic. So that's the goal. So cross your fingers, let's see how this goes. We're gonna keep plugging away at it. Um, this is not a diet per se. This is a way of eating. This is just the way that I'm gonna eat from now on. I have to act like um, I'm allergic, which essentially I am. Um, I'm allergic to grains. I'm allergic to anything that has the, the carbs, the, the breads, the grains, the pasta, the, the rice, anything like that. Um, essentially, I'm allergic to it because you know what happens? I blow up. I mean, really big. So um, that's going to be the way that I eat from now on, which honestly I, I, is not horrible. It's not always fast and convenient, okay? That's the downside. It's not always fast and convenient, um, but it's good. I'm eating good. It's good food. So um, that's that was Wednesday. Kind of thought that, you know, I'm going to make it through Friday, you know, I'm going to make it to Friday, and I managed to get an appointment with a uh, massage therapist, who I knew, um, and I'd never been to one before, so, you know, sure, massage is nice, who doesn't love a massage, um, but I was in so much pain that it just really took, come on, you know, the fun out of it. She worked on it quite a bit, um, and I left there thinking I'm just in so much trouble. Um, and I was because within, within the hour, it cramped right back up again, um, and was absolutely horrific. So the muscle relaxers came out. Um, that was Friday night. So, uh, during the day on Friday, uh, the neck had to take a back door because we found out that our processor, who we were scheduled to take all 11 pigs to, um, on Sunday, wasn't going to be there to take them. Uh, Phil called him and said, hey, just verifying that you're going to be there, just a confirmation. He goes, nope, I'm not. Uh, he apparently put in some kind of new floor, and there was dust from the floor that was getting into the meats that he was processing, and so the EPA shut him down. So, yes, it's a good thing that, you know, this was discovered before we had all 11 pigs processed there. However, he didn't bother communicating that with us at all, uh, which is a bummer. That's that's a bummer, and, and just more stress than really we needed at all. So, um, frantically calling around, trying to find another processor. They are few and far between guys, which is amazing for such a rural area. But, um, we had, uh, one that is an hour north of us that came highly recommended. So I gave them a call and, uh, I said, this is where I'm at. This is what happened. And I am desperate because I am not prepared to keep these pigs past Sunday. And uh, they very nicely, even though they don't, they don't have time. They hadn't planned on this. Um, they have all kinds of, of animals and stuff already scheduled coming in. They've got like 13 pigs coming in on Wednesday, I think. Um, so what it came down to is not that they couldn't do the work; it's that there's a there's a, a time where they store the meat in a freezer, um, and 
there was no freezer space. Their freezer wasn't big enough to handle all the stuff that they scheduled plus our 11 pigs. Um, but they were, they were angels. Okay. Because we figured out something, uh, between us and we kind of partnered up and, uh, where they would normally handle the cut list and talking to our customers. Um, I handled that part for them and took all that down. And then, uh, we, uh, we will work with them as far as picking up the meat. Um, typically they wait and people come up, you know, pick them up as they can. There's no time. There's no room for that. So, um, as soon as they're done with all of the fresh meat, they'll call us and we'll go pick up all the fresh meat and deliver it to our customers. And then they'll be able to hang on to the smoke stuff and, uh, they'll smoke it. And when they're done with that, we'll go pick up that, come back. Here we go. Um, so it's a little more involved, uh, than we would normally do. It's a little more involved than we hope to ever do again. Uh, but I am grateful, so, so grateful that we were able to pull this off. And I'm very pleased with these guys. You know, now I, we have to see what they do. Um, but so far, I'm ecstatic. And if they process as good as they do everything else, um, I will shout their names from the rooftops and make sure everybody knows to go to them. Um, so we are scrambling. Our trailer that we had hoped to use, um, the wheels locked up on it. So our plan to back the trailer up to the pig pen and let the pigs get used to it for a week, feed them in there, um, bombed horribly. So they did not have any time to get used to going into the trailer. Um, Saturday morning, our friend Ken came over and he helped uh, Phil build a chute. I was still rather medicated and I'm useless. On, I mean, I take NyQuil and I'm toast, but um, I don't take aspirin, you guys. So, you know, taking that stuff... From my neck was really that was really over the top and I was struggling just to to keep up um, but uh, they built a chute and then uh, we got out there and we started trying to round up the pigs we managed to get I think one in there uh, before we realized we're in over our heads so I called uh, the lady who we borrowed the trailer from and who also happens to be the person we bought the little piglets from. And I said, hey, you know, is your offer to help still good? She said, yeah, but you got to come pick me up. I said, not a problem. I'll come pick you up. So when I picked her up, she called her husband so that he would come when he was done doing what he was doing. And uh, we came back. And, of course, that's when it started to rain. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're out there and it's raining buckets, just buckets, um, cold rain, steady, hard rain. Um, at one point, uh, I did, I turned really quick because I heard it, what sounded exactly like a tree being felled. It was that snap of the wood, you know, didn't see anything, couldn't figure out where it was at. So it's like, okay, that was different. Phil heard it. Everyone heard it. We just couldn't figure out where it went down because we didn't hear it land. We just heard it snap. Um, when her husband showed up, uh, it took us, it, you guys, we started this at 10 in the morning easily and we didn't finish until almost seven o'clock at night, um, getting all the pigs in there. It was, it was rough going. They were not having it, especially the one, the one female, she was not having it at all. So, um, we managed to get them all in there. Thankfully, uh, with our friend's help, we, we would have never made it without them. So uh, we grabbed the hose to go and start getting some of the stuff off. I can't tell you the number of times I walked out of my own boots because that was so muddy in there. Phil fell down in there. Um, they fell down in there. We had it splashed up on, you know, it, it was a hot mess, stinky, stinky mess. Um, and so we go to turn the hose on and there's just a drizzle of water coming out. So uh, I said, okay, the hose has got to be kinked, right? So we're looking at the hose. Nope, it's not kinked. I can't figure out why the water's not coming out. Go to the front of the house, check another spot, you know, another spigot. No water coming out of that one. Um, go and flick a light on in the house. No light. We lost power during the storm. So here we are, completely covered in pig mud. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Um, and no way to take a shower. So, uh, we thanked them profusely for coming and helping and everyone kind of went on their way and the two of us just looked at each other and said, okay, we got to get out of these clothes. Um, Phil filled up a pot with some, you know, we've got water that we store around here for when these things happen, just not enough necessarily for a shower. Um, and he poured some into a pot and we took kind of a cold sponge bath, you know, just getting what we could so that the majority of it was scraped off. Um, managed to get something in our faces to eat and then passed out. I really, we were just exhausted and we had to be up at five o'clock in the morning because the pigs had to be delivered at seven. They had to be there at seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday. 
Um, so the pigs spent the night in the trailer. We couldn't even really go anywhere because our truck was hooked up to the trailer and it's the only truck that's working at the moment. I'm telling you, it's been, a ha it's been a heck of a week, you guys. Heck of a week. So we get up in the morning. It's pitch black because, of course, the mornings are darker now. And uh, we pile into the truck and off we go. Um, we made it there. We managed to find the place. And uh, we offloaded the pigs. And it all went pretty smooth after that. They're about an hour from us. If you're going normal speed, um, if you're hauling 11 pigs, it's a little over an hour. Uh, but everything went great. So... Uh, hopefully we heard from them today. They had a couple questions about, um, some stuff that I didn't indicate that, you know, I did, I, that I, on my cut list specifically, they, they had questions, so they called. Um, but if they sound really on top of their game and I'm so excited about that because we've been so desperate for a good processor. So all of that, I mean, we're talking the net, the neck, the doctor's visit, the massage therapist, the trailer, the pigs, the processor, delivery of the pigs. Um, the power finally came back on yesterday, Sunday at about, I want to say 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, we waited 30 minutes for the hot water tank to fill up and then we both just like piled into the shower. Um, just desperately needed a hot shower. Bad, bad, bad. Um, and then again, we were just so tired from just trying to make sure that everything was staying where it was supposed to be. Um, I've got four freezers and so we are definitely going to be getting a generator here very soon. I was so paranoid uh, that the power wasn't going to come back on. That would have been a mess. That would have been a real mess. But um, everything turned out great. Uh, it could have been a lot better, but it way could have been much, much worse. So we're here. Everything's good. And uh, I will get back on track with the videos because now life is going to level out a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And in the middle of that, I had to get a new camera. Oh, don't, don't ask. So anyway, uncle, um, everything's great. I just wanted to stop in and say, Hey, this is where we're at. And to let you know that this week we're going to be talking about different kinds of kits. Um, and I'm looking at, uh, specifically, uh, preparing our automobiles for winter because that's coming up sooner than later. Um, a get home bag, uh, and that's, you know, that's not weather dependent. Uh, you can factor in weather definitely. But uh, a get-home bag is something that I think is important. Um, and then a uh, we can dis we're going to discuss all kinds of different bags. Um, but uh, I want to be specific in detail about the ones that we have or that we're building. And the other one is about a first aid kit. Um, there are different opinions regarding EDCs, uh, everyday carries, and whether it's actually physically on your person or with you or, you know, it, I guess it depends. But uh, we'll take a look at all of those. I'm sorry this video ran long, and I'm very sorry for my absence. Uh, even if my neck starts back up again, I'll return. Count on it, okay? I hope everyone's having a great day. Thanks for sticking with us. Welcome to all the new people that are coming along, and uh, I hope you enjoy the channel and some of the goofy stuff that we do. We will talk to you later this week. Bye-bye. <laughs>